What's up, everyone? I'm Cynthia Conte, and welcome to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. This is a special edition of Team Combat League Females. This is all about the nominees for the TCL End of the Year Awards, which I'm very excited because last year I got to host it and I got to do a whole thing. But this time, Giandra and I get to interview some of the, the lucky ladies that are nominated for 2024. And one of our first nominees is for the most resilient fighter, Miss Veronica Jeffries. Welcome to our show for the first time. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so I know that you're just coming off the weigh-ins right now because you guys are yeah. in its quarter uh, quarterfinals or uh, yeah, quarterfinals, right? Yeah, semifinals. Yeah, we're in the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals. Yeah, quarterfinals. Yes. All right. And I remember I met you the last Boston. Yeah, in Boston. Yeah, Boston. With, uh, Melissa Saint Bill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some of the fighters, uh, for people that don't know, I'm going to always reiterate this, TCL are for fighters that are either not fighting or just coming out of amateurs or that have been veteran fighters, and you are a veteran. You defeated Olivia Gurel Gurulo, the IBF Super Featherweight World Champion. And you're from Brooklyn, New York. My son's name is Brooklyn. Yay. BK all day. <laughs> so let me ask you this question because I know it comes up a lot. You have been in the game. How does it feel fighting one round, three minute rounds in these fast action pace fights? I would say that it's been pretty different. Um, it's de it definitely took a little bit to get used to. And, and even as much as I've been doing it, it still feels like, oh my God, only one round. Because, you know, after the one round, I, I, I really do still have so much in me, but you really just have that one round to do what you have to do. So, um, but, you know, that's, that's how the tournament goes or that's how the competition goes. So you just got to really just get with the program real quickly. You know, it's been a good time. We made it to the quarterfinals, so I'm really excited about that you know, shooting to making it to the finals. Uh, it's been a really, really good experience, you know, coming back, coming off of even a layoff, you know, a five-year layoff, um, not really knowing how I was going to do or not going to do. And just to see that, you know, I still got a little something, something in me. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. You know, a lot of people say, AJ, nothing but a number. You are in the fabulous 40 clubs with me. Uh, how does it feel? I mean, that they say that, you know, your time is over because with age, with women, it's you're too old, but you were a three-time Golden Glove winner. You are a U.S. Silver Olympics trial uh, silver medalist. You are a former world champion. And now you're, you are kicking ass in this. Yeah, it's Boston. Like, once you have it and you, you really can't get rid of it, um, it's just embedded in me. And it's just something that I you know, that I am good at, that I'm able to do, even at the age of 40. So I'm just going to keep on pushing myself to the limit. You know, what's the sense of stopping just because of my age? You know, if I can continue to do it in whichever way, whether it's in boxing, whether it's just being physical, period, you know, um, just always trying to figure out another way to see what I can do. You know, I'm not putting no age on it. So I'm just gonna continue to just live and just do it how I, how I wanna do it. Well, you are representing New York City Attitude. And for these awards, these are amongst your peers. And what does it feel like to be nominated for Most Resilient Fighter? And first of all, when I saw it, I was like, oh, who, me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be nominated. Um, I saw the other people and my peers in it as well. So, um, you know, it's fun. It's fun, it's nice, um, I, it's appreciated. And um, yeah, there's only two weight divisions in the in, mm -hmm. in TCL. It's super featherweight yeah. and also welterweight. You, we've seen the the way that women have to go up and down in weight classes just to get fights in regular yeah. boxing. How does it feel that you can only be a super featherweight or a welterweight in this? Like, have you thought about maybe moving up to wel welterweight? I mean, that's a big jump, but still, it is a big jump. Um, I I think I need something in the in between because a lot of us are in the in between. You know, a lot of us are really sucking down to come down. For 130 and 147 might be too big for some of us. 147 might be too small for somebody else who's um, at a higher weight. So um, I'm hoping that next year they really do inject some middle weight class to kind of give like a full range. Because we have so many women out here that are amazing and that probably was unable to be a part of this because the weight just was not right for them. And or um, so I'm hoping that they do make the choice of, of uh, giving us more. You know, because that's always been our problem when it comes to weight classes, you know, from the Olympics to this. Um, so I'm hoping that changes, you know, just adding more because so that way you can see 
all different versions of us. I love it. I, I, I have said this on the telecast for TCL. I say it all the time. The women always, they, they, they fight sometimes better than the men. They have the most action packed yeah. fights in even That's regular 10 round boxing because they have something to prove. There is to no prove, feel out yeah. rounds in TCL. You have to get in there and get your opponent out. Yeah. It's almost time. New York City Attitude is looking to hopefully clinch the victory because yes. you guys were the winners last year and at one you point you ahead. guys were like at the bottom and this is I when know. i worked at the other week but you guys yeah. came out of nowhere and clinched you're in the quarterfinals do you have a message to all of your fans to everyone in new york city to your team and especially everyone that's gonna be watching this before the awards i appreciate and i'm grateful for all the support um for how long you know for all the years that i've been fighting even for the people who continue to support me now um i'm thankful i'm grateful um you know just Keep, keep supporting, keep supporting boxing, keep supporting women boxing, keep supporting women fighters. Like, we need all of it. And I just hope that things just get better and better for us as a time to go on because, you know, they need to know how amazing these women are. And I'm happy that I'm a part of that bunch of women that's able to show it and will continue to show it as long as I want. Yeah, you are a testament in TCL. Your record is five and four and your professional yeah. record is 17, one and one. Kicking ass. I love a badass yeah. woman in boxing. Best Thank of luck you. to Veronica Jeffries. Do you have a mid, uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, Veronica, queen. All these resilient fighters of all the queens. Uh, Melissa St. Veal, one of your compadres, one of your besties, yes. another queen. Yes. Uh, but Definitely. we'll be interviewing all of you guys. So best of luck to you ladies and stay healthy. Thank you so much all for right. joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Oh, well, Melissa St. Veal, welcome to the show. Welcome to Best Women's Boxing Show, period. I love your I just love everything about you. Just your infectious laughter, your smile, your dancing, and your boxing. You, This is your first year for uh, Team Combat League, and you're part of New York City Attitude. Congratulations on being nominated for Most Resilient Fighter. How does that feel? It feels amazing because I'm more than just a fighter. I am a fighter who fights for awareness. Different causes like autism, young kids who grew up in broken homes like my and people who are, you know, going through cancer, and the list goes on. So when I go in that ring, I want people to see that I'm not just a fighter. I'm somebody who represents for different, you know, causes and raise different awareness. I know that your causes uh, are very, very near and dear to you. I see it on your socials, especially autism. My nephew is autistic. So thank you oh, so much oh. for raising so much yeah. awareness. Oh, you're making me cry. Besides, besides you being so, so sweetheart, tenderhearted, you are also known as our little Miss Tyson because the way you fight, you like to get in and throw those punches and bunches, get those knockouts. You are for six and four with one knockout in TCL. For a female to do a knockout, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. You have mm -hmm. been in the game. You are a professional boxer. You've been around for a while. And now that you're going into a different kind of league, it's a different format. You're doing two minutes and yes. it's only one round. How does that feel in comparison? Because you cannot, there is no feel out round. Oh, let me see what she has. It's you got to get in there and bang. Let me tell you, it, it is really different because, you know, I'm a 10 round of fighter, eight round of fighter. The change to come in to do a one round fight, it, it was real, you know, I that job. What does TCL mean to you to, to help revive your career once again? I'm just happy that TCL is giving me the platform to raise awareness for the big cause. Because I want people to know what, 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 how far in autism is. Because Duke the President didn't even know what autism was. So I when know, people you know. see us go in that ring, I when know, the public know, friends, know, they know it's for autism and yeah. all the patients, oh, yeah, yeah. all the champions on the spectrum, and everybody that's going through a mental health, and everybody that's dealing with you know childhood trauma i want them to know every time they see melissa saying good in the ring i'm representing them <laughs> Well, I know I caught you guys at a bad time because I know y'all hungry. You guys just got out of a weigh-in. Enjoy the fight and, and congratulations on being nominated and best of luck to you guys. Best of luck to New York City Attitude and maybe you guys will be and well, still. Same thing. Y'all right here. Welcome back, Alicia Napoleon. Welcome to Best Women's Boxing Show, period. It is such a pleasure. I just saw your daughter. She's welcome to join. She just ran upstairs, so maybe better for us right now. <laughs> free and very explosive she'll be interrupting this entire video so <laughs> as, as they should i have a three-year-old and mine just burst in i'm like don't do that congratulations uh you are being nominated for tcl's most resilient 
fighter. How does it feel to be nominated for such a great award? Um, I'm really grateful. I wasn't expecting that. It, it feels really honorable to have um, been nominated for such a pre prestigious title. Um, coming back into the sport of boxing from such a long layoff from having my daughter, um, it's a really nice welcoming to be nominated. Uh, for people that don't know, she was a former two-time world champion. She's been in the game for a long time. And you said it, and I read it in many interviews that, and I know this, that being a mother is the hardest job there is. I mean, you taking a, uh, taking a punch to the face, training, weight cutting, nothing beats being a mother. How is it? How has that been balancing that even when you first gave birth and then trying to figure out, oh, shit, how am I going to do this? Uh, it was extremely difficult extremely difficult um there's it's really hard to find the depth of words to describe what i had to go through in this transition i think it was really hard for me personally because i'm a former two-time world champion i'm used to being uh in the spotlight on the go like nothing holding me back constantly pushing and being such an entrepreneur uh, a forward thinking woman in this world uh, and wanting to be independent um, and just having this sort this lifestyle that I'm used to for many years. I've been boxing for 20 years. To have this lifestyle to all of a sudden be put on pause, on full stop, like you're going full speed ahead and all of a sudden you come to a complete halt and your body goes through a tremendous change and your mind and your spirit and everything is transitioning and the transition is beautiful but it's painful. And every, I think, I think most women experience this pain of transition when they come from such a, a different way of living. Like mm -hmm. some moms, they stay at home moms and that's a beautiful thing. And they're, they're in the home before even having the family and they're doing things locally around the house and not traveling. Their careers aren't as demanding. But for some that are, are CEOs or traveling for business and trying to accomplish world titles and professional athletes and used to a certain way of life, it's really hard. It's really, it was really hard for me. I expected to be back in the game first year of my daughter's life and it didn't go that way. I suffered with postpartum anxiety and depression for two years. I was really heavy. I lost a hundred pounds since having my daughter. Um, yeah, it was, I put on a lot of weight. Um, I breastfed for 13 months and the breastfeeding did not. Yeah, it was rough oh it, you are a hero girl <laughs> you see rough. for for people that are tuning in this is what happens when females when women fight this is it's natural women have babies and you're you are a fighter and you are preaching to the choir because unfortunately you didn't get to meet my co-host yonder labeouf she's also a mother and we are both in the same we're not fighters but we're on the go we're we're traveling for work and for everything to stop, it's so different. But now you have a different purpose in life. You have a daughter. And now you found your purpose to get back in the ring fighting one round in fast action pace rounds. There's not 10 rounds. There's no feel out rounds. There's no, you know, what's my game plan throughout 10 rounds. It's a game plan in two minutes. How do you yeah. how do you like it so far? Um, I really love it, to be honest. I really, I think it's really exciting. I think it was a great way for me to get back, get my feet wet and just jump and dive right in it's a completely different experience though being a part of the team the camaraderie was great that's totally different because boxing is such a lonely sport it's only you you got like you have your coaches you have your fans but there's nothing like having a team around you and you guys lifting each other up training together like that that's the best part like going through the hustle and bustle day after day training with the team um lifting each other up getting each other ready motivating each other leading each other that was that's that's really a different experience. And then going in with just that short amount of time to gain, um, you know, another point to, to lead to the victory for your team. It's so different than having the time to fill out your opponent. I don't know what, what I like better, to be honest. Like, I, I don't know if I like fighting long distance better or if I actually like fighting one round. I, I think it's the team aspect that I really love and wish I could incorporate the fighting for world titles and long distance fights. So they're, they're different. I, I guess in a sense, I, I appreciate them equally because they really are so different. What I do like about it, it's almost kind of like amateur amateur box it's amateurs you're 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 going to be fighting different styles you're not going to be able to select your fighter because 
it's your coaches that are going to put in like, oh, that one's going to fare well. And you don't know what kind of style they're going to come out besides they're going to try to knock you out. And right now you are three and one in TCL and you are on the reigning winning team, New York City Attitude. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to be and still because I was there for the, for the Mega Brawl last year. This year, almost at the bottom, but now you guys are in the quarterfinals. Do you have a message to your team, to the rest of your team that's going to be putting it on the line to hopefully in that Mega Brawl? Well, I just want to remind them uh god first and it was really nice experience come on you can come in no because this is a part of your life that people don't necessarily get to see oh this is your daughter how old are you how old are you they love me three i have a i have a your future husband his name is brooklyn <laughs> he's three <two>. oh, brooklyn <laughs> yes. this, is, this is a side that a lot of people don't ever get to see they only see you in the ring they only get see you guys uh weight cutting and you know, sparring, but this is what you have to come home to because at the end of the day, when you're training and traveling for work, you still have to come home and be a mom. That's another job in itself. I have to say, what, what, what do you want to say, Lena? Uh, I want to say, look. Hey, look, look. She's pretty, right? Oh, she's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, well, you <laughs> are too. Hey, let mommy talk. Mommy. What? I want chips. Okay, you can have chips. So, so I wanted to correct you. Four and one. With oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Four and one. Unfortunately, there was that one. But, you know, again, it's, there's a lot of funny decision making um, in, in the sport, whether it's long distance or TCL. But that one loss was, I, I fought a southpaw. It was a little difficult because I haven't, actually, I never fought a southpaw and barely been able to spar with a southpaw. And I haven't fought in so long since 2020. Yeah. So it was, it was a bit of a challenge that so they did give it to her. And that's great. Um, I'm, I'm happy for her for that. Just didn't want that that L on the record, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. And but it doesn't I, affect your professional record. So for people no, that it don't doesn't. know, it's on it's on the side of box track, not the professional record. Yes, it, yes. Um, but I did really good with those those four consistent victories, knocking them down, and just being victorious for my team, which was exciting. But I did have to step away from the team. So I didn't know if you knew that. I did I have did to not. step away. I did. I had to because it, my family's been going through some things that I had to step away from to tend to. My daughter was suffering really bad from me being away. I noticed uh, a lot of anxieties in her starting to develop. And that was really rough. That was really hard for me to go through with her. And then just some personal medical things that, uh, we're facing at the moment that I, I needed to make a choice and families first. So to give a message to my team uh, is really nice. So hopefully they, they hear it, but I just want to remind them that they are so resilient and that they are covered by the blood of Christ. And we have been able to share in prayer and lift each other up. And that was, um, I felt like that was a big purpose that God wanted me to do. I, I prayed a lot and I wasn't sure if I was to, I was to join this team. I had such an uphill climb with getting myself back mentally and physically but I but God did give me a word that this was a part of my ministry and that God wanted me to minister to his people whether I win or lose and that God gave me an audience and I made it a point to pray with my teammates to do Bible studies and to just increase them and influence them and motivate them to the word of God. And I don't know what your faith is. And I hope I'm not making you uncomfortable. No, no, on no, 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 no. I'm, I was born Catholic and I, I do pray. Um, But, you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And he has brought me through so much adversity in my life. And boxing has been a huge outlet for me, a huge therapy for me. And even might have became my God in some sense. Because I found a lot of identity in the sport and becoming a world champion and then transitioning to motherhood saying, who am I? Who am I? Um, but I'm learning that the most important titles of life is mother, is wife, or the things that are God ordained, that are sacred. And, um, but God blesses us with talents and gifts. And I know he blessed me with the talent to fight and compete to become a champion. And I just hope to instill and encourage my team as they move forward without me, that I'm with them and I'm praying for them, even though I'm not there. And uh, I love them and I appreciate them for all the joy they brought me while I was on the league um, because they really did bring me so much joy being able to camaraderie with them, befriend them, meet new people, the girls, the women, especially the women and um, to fellowship with them so greater is he that is in me than he is in the world and my team has strength in them and i just want to let them know that i'm praying for them and god is in them and god is over them and he's reminding us every day to have courage and be brave because the courage and the strength is within us already so just to be confident and believe in it 
and move forward and go get that victory till the end. There's a reason why you are nominated as one of the most resilient fighters. I don't know if you're going to be going back to the league. I don't know if you're going to go back into boxing, but whatever you do, you're, you're going to be great at it because you have your faith, you know exactly who you are, and you know exactly where you're going. But it was such a pleasure to speak to you. I did not know how this interview was going to go uh, <laughs> because this whole day has been very interesting, but to hear this coming from you, and you really spoke to me because I'm a mom, and we go through these, these identity crises of yeah. what am I going to do? I have a baby. Oh my, am I, like, am I going to be able to continue with my job? And there's so many people out there, so many females that are wanting to go into boxing that might even have this this issue or they might have kids already and think they think it's too late so for you to be saying this to people that are going to be watching this interview that are just fans of tcl or of just a view or just in boxing they'd be like oh wow she's just like me so I, I i appreciate you being very honest and raw about um about everything and i prayers to your family and prayers to you thank you so much i really appreciate the time you've given me and if there's any mom or girls out there anybody in general that want advice or want to get deeper and talk about what i might have been through to help them with whatever with their, whatever they're going through any questions they have they can definitely dm me at boxing napoleon on instagram because i feel like a, my big mission is to really help with the testimonies that i have been through in my life and i, I only hope to up, uplift and encourage anyone out there that needs it. I think you joining TCL, you needed that mom break to just kind of be yourself again and just do what you love in a different setting. And I and that I think that's what it brought to you, brought that joy back of why you fight, but in a in a whole different way as being because you're already lonely from the postpartum, but being with the team. And I think that's what, what TCL has done for you. And I'm I'm happy for you. Welcome to the show, Samantha Ginthin. You are from the Houston Hitmen. I was just yes, in Houston. I was hosting the show with Ammo Williams. Congratulations on being nominated for Rookie of the Year for the TCL End of the Year Awards. As you Thank know, you. these are amongst your peers. So your peers will be voting for you. Yeah. So Houston cool. is actually new to TCL. How has this type of format in boxing one round, two minutes? one round for you well it's been three minutes for me uh, texas has been giving me uh the women three minutes oh um, california did you hear that california <laughs> they gotta step it up a little bit i think um it's been great i've i've enjoyed it um i feel like my style fits uh, the tcl really well i started in the amateurs and our motto was always never never lose the first round so i feel like i carried that over uh to tcl as well well you are eight and no by one knockout so far i you have the highest record out of all females as to date Exciting. Really? That's uh, I'm surprised that you weren't matched up, man. If I saw your record, why didn't they, why didn't they match you? Yeah. I would have the, loved to the, see you fight. Yeah. The girl um Dallas had a, a regular pro fight that night. I think it was strategic, but mm. no. Uh, <laughs> Are you trying to say um, she was ducking you? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. I think it just <laughs> fell that way, but uh, I've, I've told her that before. Cause we're, we're good friends. We've met each other uh, before a couple of times. Um, so okay. In the amateurs, that is. All um, right, so you, yeah. you fight New Mexican style. What's New Mexican fighting style? I don't know. Me I know Mexican fighting style. What's New Mexican? It's the same, but it's just newer uh, with a little more footwork, I think. No, I, I just oh. said that I, I'm originally from New Mexico. So um, I traveled over to Houston to be a part of the TCL. Um, I know Austin Trout very well. He's also from New Mexico. But I just kind of wanted to carry that over with me. I kind of wrote that in. Um, on my mm -hmm. bio there. But yeah, I definitely have a, a an aggressive style. Come forward if I need to. Um, if you're shorter, smaller, I'll box you if I need to. Uh, but I, I like to get in there and I like to get to the action right away. You're a two-time Golden Glove champion. You used to be a judo fighter. Why did you go into boxing when you can still continue to break ankles? You just like to break faces instead? <laughs> uh, breaking the ankles is also a, ba uh, a boxing move uh, for me, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was into judo a lot um, right after basketball. I played college basketball. I did uh, judo after that. I wanted to do MMA, but there was just a lot of fights that fell through. Um, I met my boxing coach, uh, Rene Carrasco, and he convinced me to start doing the amateur uh, realm of boxing. The way that it's set up, you know, it's like a tournament, right? Similar to uh, DCL. If you want to win, you got to show up and you got to fight. And so that's how I was able to secure those fights. Boxing just kept rolling after uh, those tournaments. And here I am. You know, one of the things that it's, we all know that it is 
a team sport, but you are in the ring. So every sport that you've competed in besides basketball has been a lonely sport. How's it felt to have that team cheering you on, screaming you? Because every fighter that fights is very, very important to get that extra point. Yeah, I've always felt a team aspect in boxing. Um, I've had a tight team in New Mexico, but as soon as I got into the TCL, I mean, I remember our first fight was with um, San Antonio and it's electrifying. Like every time I got into the ring, the, the match was tied. So I had to uh, win the round for us and I, I got the lead for us each time. It was uh, super memorable and everybody's energy, you just feed off of it. It's, it's great. It's a, it's a good feeling. There's only two weight classes, super featherweight and welterweight. Is that your true weight class or are you? do you have to move down or up in weight? It's my walk around weight, to be honest. Um, we just weighed in. I was like two pounds under the weight limit. So two? I, um, yeah. Two pounds under? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't even start asking about my teammate, Jenny. She's, she's, she's under as well. We, we eat good over here. I think when, once I go pro, maybe I'll go into like 135. I, I, I believe if I can make 130 as well. As I get finished with TCL, I think I'll start walking into the 135 uh, pro ranks. Okay, so you're not pro, right? Oh, well, once you do a TCL, you can't go back in the amateur. For people that are going to be watching this who don't even know anything about you, who do you resemble? Or who do you fight like oh, out, of the, fight out of the like? female fighters or even male fighters? Like, do you have a jab like Shakur <sighs> Or, or, oh. or like Loma, the power like Tank. I mean, or, I like, or I like, uh, Clarissa Shields, uh, Jab. I like that you named all lefties with the with the male fighters, and I watch them a lot too. Um, I I would like to say I have similar movements to Lomachenko in the way that he's able to maneuver out of. Uh, clinches. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's an underrated move or an underrated skill of boxers. Um, you know, like when you hit someone and they're hurt, they clinch you. Loma does that very well. He, he's able to um, remove himself from that clinch and then get back to work. I feel like I do that a lot. But in the female ranks, um, because I, I love female fighters, but I think a lot of them that are coming up from the amateurs are the ones that we need to start looking out for, uh, yeah. like Gabriela Sosa. And uh, we need to look at uh, Ariana Carrasco, all those girls coming up. And the pros right now, I would say Amanda Serrano is one of my favorites to watch. She's a little bit flat-footed. Sometimes I do that too. Uh, but she's just so, she's about that action. And that's what I do too, I think. Well, it's such a pleasure speaking to you, uh, Samantha. I Best of luck to you and best of luck to your team. I don't know if Houston's going to win the Mega Brawl. I don't, you know, the past couple, the last fight that I saw Houston, everyone that I, yeah. saw, everyone that was at the bottom beat their team. So anything can happen because right. uh, you guys right. are all hungry and I know you guys are all wanting to win that mega brawl. Well, best of luck to you and best of luck to you and your team and uh, for being nominated for Rookie of the Year. Thank you for Thank joining Thank you. Us. I appreciate right. the interview. Um, I'm also part of the Miami team now. They, they drafted me and my teammate, uh, Jenny Fuchs. So Oh, I love Jenny. Is, she, is that her in yeah, the background? Her. Yeah, that's Jenny. her. Jenny. Oh my God. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of yours. I love you and Michaela. You would like, I keep saying she needs to be signed. I have put it out there on Twitter. Jenny needs to be signed by a promoter, you guys. Okay? I'm just exactly, saying. yeah. Yes. Some big things coming up for her, too. You Be on the lookout for her as well. Good. Okay. Well, best of luck to both of you. I can't wait to see you guys in the ring. Take care. Welcome back to the show, Jamie Mitchell. It's been a long time. You Best women's boxing show, period. You actually came into studio when we first started our show back in Las Vegas. Uh, you had the belt. You're a former world champion. And now I'm so happy to see you. Welcome <laughs> back, Jamie. <laughs> How's everything been? How has um, how has TCL been treating you? Everything's been good. A little just backstory about me since we last spoke. My son, he's doing good. You know, he's yes. fighting now. He's a uh, 3-0 and with three knockouts in, in um, Muay Thai. He's traveled internationally wow. with his fighting. Uh, he has an international fight under his belt as well now. He's doing good and um, just so happy to be able to give down all the jewels that I've learned in my boxing career down to him. So he's doing very amazing and I'm doing amazing as well. I'm a former champion now, but still in the game, still training, still working hard, still still competing, still active. Um, TCL has been great. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. I love it. Um, not just for myself, but there's other fighters out there who who needs a platform who's not hasn't really yet made that leap into the pros that's still amateur you know what i'm saying who's kind of like maybe maybe he could be indecisive or you know getting their feet wet with tco is a perfect opportunity um for people like of that of that magnitude as far as trying to turn pro and transition into the pros so 
and, and people like myself, who's, I guess, considered, you know, um, uh, old goats and stuff like that, who, who's no, been around for a minute. No, you're not an just kinda, old goat. <laughs> you know. No, uh, still, no, what I... You're just, you you know, instead of, I had this conversation about this for fighters that are pro that have been in the game, who have been world champions, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. not just sitting around waiting by the phone because you never know when you're going to get that call. At least you exactly. stay active, you get paid, mm -hmm. you get, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, and it keeps you on weight. It, 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 it keeps you active instead of you mm -hmm. just sitting at home, picking your yeah. nose and whatnot. Right. But uh, you right. are, congratulations on being nominated for Rookie of the Year. So weird hearing Rookie of the Year. Yeah, really? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's Rookie of the Year. It's a nice honor because they're end of the year awards and they are voted amongst your peers. But I think that's really yeah. nice because these are the these are the people that you're traveling with, you're fighting with, mm -hmm. you're laughing mm -hmm. with, and just, yeah. you know, <laughs> thriving and, and just growing with. This is a... Boxing is a very lonely sport. You know this. It but now you're is. in a team in a team uh, setting. How has that mm -hmm. been doing one round, two minutes or three minutes in certain states versus a 10 rounder, two minutes? How have you been able to adjust um, to do one round and get that in and out win? To me, even in the amateurs back when I was, I was competing in the amateurs, I've always had a pro style. I don't think I got a lot of appreciation for that in the amateurs because it's kind of like a, a, you know, punches and bunches type of a style in the, in the, in the amateurs. And kind of like going into the pros with this TCL thing, it kind of gives me flashbacks with that because it's like, oh, am I doing enough? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And you only have one round, two minutes, possibly three, depending on where you are. You get the job done and, and trying to win the judges over and stuff like that into your, into your favor of, of your, of your team. Me personally, I'm I'm a 10 round fighter on my real boxing career. So I feel as though one round is more dangerous than 10 rounds. Me personally. Really? You just don't have enough time. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta kinda like think like that. You have to kind of like you also have to bring into to um scenario, okay. Well, if I only have one one round, you have to be smart and say, I still want to be able to compete in the season. So don't get put on suspension trying to hurry up and do anything. So you, you gotta have to be smart. You have to be, you have to have a lot of common sense. Um, and, and not try to, you know, go too crazy, you know what I'm saying? But still keep your opponent, keep keep her, you know, uh, aware too that I'm still dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it, 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 has its, it, it has its perks, you know what I'm saying? You just got to understand and know how to work with uh, the, what's going on as far as what could happen if you rush. Or maybe some fighters are just rushy fighters anyways, so it, it works well with them. For people that don't know, if um, in TCL, once you are cut, injured, you're officially suspended. You go straight to the hospital right after. There's no, like, you sit in the back, you go straight to the hospital, and you are out pretty much for the rest of the season, depending season, on how yeah. bad it is. You know, you're the super featherweight division. There's only two divisions, super featherweight mm -hmm. and welterweight. Uh, mm -hmm. I know some people, you know, like to move up and down in weight. Do you think you can possibly move up to welterweight for different opponents? I, I Women do it all the time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not stuck in, in one location as far as weight. I've never been. It's just that, you know, when I was chasing the world title dream, I kind of wanted to be lock in and be consistent with that's just how I am mentally as a person. Um, but now that we kind of like, we don't know what's next for me really technically, we don't really know what's next for me. So if I got a call to fight at uh, 126 or 122, I, I would do it. Yeah, for sure. I'm not, I'm not running or ducking for nobody in no way division. Would you go up I'm to cool 135, 135? Um, depending on, yeah, if the price is right and who's there, we'll be talking about. Yeah, for sure. I'm open to doing anything. Sam. Yeah. You know what? Money's money talks. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Mega Brawl is going to be coming up soon. Quarterfinals are just around the corner. You have, um, oh my God, what's his name? Barry. Barry's your coach. World-class trainer, Barry Hunter. This is his second season. How has that mm -hmm. been under his tutelage? You know, what's crazy is that um, I've always wanted to work with Barry Hunter. Even back when I was in the amateurs, before I ever thought about turning pro, I've always, that was like one of my dreams. Like, I don't know the way he used to show up to them tournaments with all them damn killers. I'm like, God damn, I hope I ain't got to fight one of them bitches today in this tournament because, <laughs> you know, he was he just always had that. You know, Barry, is a, in a, he's a good guy. He's a cool dude in, in, in person, too. He's really, he's just, I just like his energy. So me getting a call to fight on TCL, DC Destroyers, that was like, oh, my God, yay. I just kind of like hit the lottery because that was kind of like one of my dreams, working with Barry Hunter and um, uh, Boogie, Coach Boogie as well. So. Um, working with him was pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? He's very, you know, methodical, very, you know what I'm saying? Calm in his approach and stuff like that. He he gives compliments when they're due and he, and he going to talk about you like a dog if you're not doing what you need to be doing. So and he, I, I like, I like him. I like him. I've actually 
I'm not I'm not on a DC team anymore. I'm, re I'm representing Las Vegas Hustle now. Um, oh, you are? Okay. I did not know yeah, this. But yeah, it's all, yeah. No, so, it, it is common. It is common that a lot of people end up moving teams. I understand that. Yeah, because they, right. they I think um they got cut, but they still needed a 126 pounds for the Las Vegas team. So that's how I ended up making the Las Vegas team as a 26 pounder. So no, like, but Barry- How do you like the Las Vegas hustle? Well, I'm from Vegas. So I, I, know. I like it because I'm able to represent Vegas. That's what I'm there 24 seven every day training. So it was it was kind of like, damn, you know, can I can I get on a Vegas team? Um, even though we're cut. So, and then, you know, it actually ended up working out for me. Um, I, I um, kind of like talked um, the coach, Big um, big D, Big David, yeah. and to picking me up. So yeah, it, it worked out perfect. And, and that's another beauty of TCL is just because you get cut from your mm -hmm. team. And if there's another mm -hmm. opening, because I know that mm -hmm. it's happened before and with other yeah. teammates and yeah. you get to learn, now you're under Jeff Mayweather. So yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. You know, why not? Those are and, some it, and it's just games. so cool. Regardless of what happens in my career down the line, as far as my real professional boxing career, to be able to, you know, open the doors for female boxing, you know what I'm saying? And be one of those vessels who actually helped do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? To look to look back 10 years down the line and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I helped do that. You know what I'm saying? It's, the picture is much bigger than you. It's not always about you. Sometimes they're using you to help you know, build the platform or help with female boxing and stuff like that. I sparred with a girl. The girl is 14 years old. And, you know, my mindset going into sparring or going into fights, I really don't really think that nobody really that good to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I have to give her her flowers. She's 14 years old. I cannot remember the girl's name. Um, I think she's from San Francisco. Uh, her father, uh, I think, co-trains her. He has dreadlocks. She is the truth. I can't remember her name because I really want to give her her flowers re respectfully, but... She's 14 years old. She's going to be a bad girl. You know what I'm saying? So sparring with her and then going to this TCL thing, thinking, you know what? Maybe when she turns pro after she gets done with her amateur career 10 years later, she could be doing TCL. And I'm like, wow, I got to spar with her. And I was actually able to be a vessel using the platform of TCL to motivate other female fighters. So it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. It's really beautiful. It's still regardless of uh, TCL, I mean, women's boxing, you're still at the forefront you know, you're, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's still growing and it's grown leaps and bounds, but it still has so much to grow. And for yeah. you to be on the TCL team where there's more women on the team that are actually having mm -hmm. some better fights than the guys that I've mm -hmm. seen, you guys throw down and I love it. I love it when you go show up and show out. You need to start making rewards for the bad behavior in, in the boxing ring and it's TCL. People getting knockouts, people being undefeated the whole season. They need to start getting a little bit of bonuses and stuff like that. That needs to be talked about uh, for the next season for sure, you know. Oh, that's a good idea. Mark, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Um, but no, that's a good idea. You never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only the second season and I've seen it grow mm -hmm. from the very first season to what it mm -hmm. is now. And, and it really has grown, but I'm so glad that you are enjoying yourself and that you're, you're able to give the flowers to certain people that you've been in the ring with. And I can't wait mm -hmm. to see you in the ring. Um, and I want to see who's going to win mega brawl. I don't know. Who do you think is going to be the last, the, the, the last two standing? Come on now, Las Vegas hustle. That's a stupid question. And who, Come no, but now. who else, who are you guys going to be in the ring with? It could be New York. It could be New York. New York and Vegas. Oh, New York's the, the reigning team. So we'll see. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see. This is going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Jamie the Miracle Mitchell. It was such a pleasure having you on our show again, but in a different way. Congratulations on being nominated for Rookie of the Year for TCL End of the Year Awards. And best of luck to you. Best of luck to the team. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you guys for having me. Peace. All right, guys. I'm Cindy Oconte. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. Team Combat League End of the Year Awards. See you guys. Bye, guys.